What's up, peeps? We finally did it. Legacy Cooking Channel. Legacy is an acronym standing for love, empowerment, God, acceptance, cooking, and inclusion. Each one of those things, as we explore and take this journey, are going to be representative of one of those things. I've spent my whole life in the restaurant business, done every job from back to the front. So I'll tell you right now, as far as culinarily speaking, you don't have to call me on the technique, but if you follow the directions, I can promise you, you'll make amazing food. And it's made in a way that you can include anybody you want to in this. We feel that society and culture has really moved away from sitting down at the dinner table every night with your family, seeing what's going on, saying grace, being a part of each other's lives, and making sure that you're included. Making sure that each principle of legacy is in place every single day of your life to help facilitate the best mental and spiritual growth possible, to bring awareness to special needs and the journey that that takes you on. And as tough as some people say it is, you would not believe the blessings that are bestowed on us daily because we have special needs in our life. A big part of our channel will be dedicated to the insight and the experiences of a special needs family. So here with the Legacy Cooking Channel, what we plan to do is really facilitate and help nurture a sense of family and love, God, creativity and inclusion, making sure everyone's involved taking those extra steps and going that extra mile to make sure things like love, empowerment, God, and inclusion is a part of your everyday life. So come with us on this wonderful journey while we explore some of the best things culinarily that I've ever seen, while including everybody in it and helping you at home make some bomb recipes. This channel is about family, food, and what it takes to get to that dinner table every day. These fundamental principles should be at the core of who we are as people, not just in front of people, but behind closed doors as well. So not only do we want to make you aware of what the acronyms mean, we want to show you in real time and give you examples and show you how easy it is at home to incorporate these things into your day-to-day -day life. So we want to thank you so very much for coming along on this journey with us. We hope you enjoy what you see. And don't be afraid to give us suggestions and things like that. We're not professionals here, so we're learning as we go. But I can promise you, we'll keep it fun, we'll keep it clean, and you'll see more love than you might have ever seen in your life. And I'll tell you, at the end of all of that, there's two things that I've learned in life above all things. One, it's free to be kind, and two, God never says oops. Thank you so much for checking out our channel, and we hope to see you soon. Right, Tao? He's a good cuckold. What's up, peeps? What's up, my friends? It's Steve with Legacy Eats, bringing you one of my most favorite recipes, sun-dried tomato bread. Very, very simple. Five or six basic ingredients, and then you're just waiting. There's a couple things you want to get before you start making bread, and these things are imperative to have. First thing you want to get is a scale. Make sure you know how much your ingredients weigh. It'll be much easier to follow a recipe. Had a wonderful culinary arts teacher in high school tell me one time, said, you can do anything if you know how to read a recipe. So get yourself a couple things to make sure you've got the proper tools so that you're successful. So today, I started off weighing out 500 grams of all-purpose organic King Arthur flour. Also weighed out 330 grams of lukewarm water, about 100 degrees. And I got 15 grams of salt, half a teaspoon of sugar. I'm gonna be using this sun-dried tomato product and we're gonna be using about a tablespoon of the oil and we're gonna chop up a tablespoon of the Julian sun-dried tomatoes to add after the bread gets warm. So we'll talk about yeast for a second. Yeast, of course, as you know, is a living organism. There's many different options out there. You can get active dry, instant yeast, etc. For this recipe, we're gonna use active dry yeast or fresh yeast cakes. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to crumble our yeast into our 330 grams of water. Give that a quick stir, and we're going to add a quarter teaspoon of sugar to that to give the yeast something to eat. We're going to go ahead and add 15 grams of kosher salt to our flour that we made out of. So, really quick before we go any further, let's talk about salt. Most of us would just have table salt laying around the house. And that's fine for some things, but table salt in and of itself is bleached, and that really leaches out a lot of the natural minerals that it has in it. Also, it's got an aluminum-based anti-caking additive that they add to it. And in 1924, the government had manufacturers start adding iodine because of a public health concern regarding iodine deficiency. So, culinarily speaking, table salt is kind of harsh, and it doesn't get along very well with yeast, so we're going to go with kosher salt. And kosher salt is a wonderful product. So kosher salt is a processed salt that doesn't contain iodine or any other additives. And kosher salt was actually created to help in the preparation of meats according to Jewish religious law. Kosher salt also has a larger flake, which means it disperses into your recipes much more consistently. So don't be afraid to expand your knowledge of what you're working with. There's a ton of different options out there from salt, from black lava salt to sea salt, smoke salts, and stuff like fluted sal, which is a salt with a higher moisture content. Oh, yeah. 
Okay, back to the recipe. So we added 15 grams of our salt to our 500 grams of organic all-purpose King Arthur flour. And we're gonna give that a quick mix. We're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna add this to our KitchenAid mixer. And we're gonna go ahead and add our dough hook attachment. Make sure that's locked down and give this a quick stir. Just gonna mix the salt up a little bit with the flour before we put in the yeast. That smells amazing. You can tell just by the smell that the yeast is already doing its work. So we're gonna start our KitchenAid mixer and slowly add our yeast mixture. So grab yourself a rubber spatula and work the sides down just a little bit so that it helps you get in there. So our sun-dried tomatoes came in oil and Italian herbs, and we're gonna take a tablespoon and a half of that oil in this container and put it into our bread mixture. We're also gonna take a tablespoon of the actual sun-dried tomatoes themselves and chop them up really fine and throw them in as well. And trust me, you really wanna resist the urge to add more water or flour. Give it a second to come together and see what you have before you do any such thing. So we chopped up our sun-dried tomatoes really fine, and we're gonna let this go until the dough starts to pull away strongly from the side of the bowl. So you can turn this up a minute, and I'm gonna go find something to do while this works a little while. So we worked our dough for about eight to 10 minutes, and it's coming along cleanly from the side of the pan. It's got just a few more minutes to go, and now I'm gonna add my finely chopped sun-dried tomatoes. Let that go for another couple minutes. Put in my sun-dried tomatoes, let it go for a couple more minutes, and it's pulling away cleanly from the sides of the bowl. So what I did is I washed my hands really, really good, because I believe in gloves at all times, but when it comes to bread, you really need to be able to feel what you're making. So I'm gonna cover my bench in flour, and you might see some chefs drop stuff from way high, and you might think it's a flare thing, but it's really not, because a little bit of height can really give you a lot more coverage on the drop. I got my trusty dough scraper. My brother gave me this years ago when I first started making bread. I've always kept this. So I'm just gonna scrape this out right here and get everything out. Put it right onto the flour that we spread on our bench. Put a little bit of flour on top, a little bit on my hands. And so we've already worked this in our kitchen egg, but we're gonna give it a little bit of hand work as well. So pretty much what we're gonna do is we're just gonna bring the outside to the inside, just like this. Two times, and then we're gonna bring up and roll down. Turn, and roll, turn, and roll. And so we're gonna give this just a little bit of work. After we're good and we can stretch a good gluten window, we're just gonna go all the way around just like this and pull from the out and put it in the middle, see that? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start to align the gluten for when we shape the bread. There we go. And we're just gonna roll this, like here. Make sure everything's tucked under nicely. Some beautiful color in that. We're gonna grab a mixing bowl, a little bit of cooking spray. Spray this down. Or you can use olive oil, whatever your preference. Just wanna give a little ease on the sides of the bowl to help the bread rise. We're gonna put this in this bowl and we're gonna keep it covered loosely for about an hour and a half, maybe even a little longer. You want it about two and a half times the size that it is right now. Then we'll come over, knock it down, and shape it into our loaf and put it in a loaf pan. All right, my friends, we're back. It's a couple hours later and our dough's had plenty of time to rise. So it's about two and a half times the size that it was when we started. You have this beautiful, soft, sun-dried tomato loaf. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna punch it down, we're gonna get as much air as we can out, and then we're gonna shape it in a loaf, and we're gonna put it into our loaf pan. First, we'll put a little more flour down. Use our bread scraper to pour that out right there. Comes right out, my goodness, it's soft. Pull it on your hands, not much. We're gonna roll this up just like this. And what we're trying to do here is we're trying to align the gluten. And after we get this rolled up into a basic loaf shape, we're gonna start at the edges and we're gonna roll our hands forward and grab the front and then pull backwards. Set it up, and we're gonna pull backwards again. And like I said previously, it's my first instinct to wear gloves, but you have to use your hands to kind of feel the dough and know what you're working with. Give it a quick 
quick spray on top. We're gonna get our towel warm again and we're gonna drape this over. And as this comes up and just as it starts to reach the edges of this, a little bit higher, we're gonna throw it in our oven. So when you're proofing the bread, there's a couple ways you can tell if it's ready to go. What I like to do is you can either time it, go by visual, you can put a piece of tape on the edge of your glass bowl and see how it rises, or you can do the touch method. So if you poke it with a finger and it holds the indentation, then that means you're ready to go and it is proof correct. If you push your finger in and it bounces back, it means it's got some more proofing left to do. So keep that in mind as you check your proof. So we're gonna let this rise, I'm gonna get cleaned up and I'll be right back. That's one of my little sous chefs right there. Sweet, so we've got our bread. It's risen up to just above the edge of the pan. We've had our oven preheating at 425 and we're gonna turn it down to 350 and pop this in for 30 minutes. We're gonna set a timer because we don't wanna forget. And all we gotta do is pop that out and then we'll tap on the bottom and that hollow sound gets there, we'll know that she's done. 